Welcome to one of the topic videos in a series I'm producing for certification prep for the Snowflake Snow Pro Core exam. My name is Joyce Avila and I earned my Snow Pro Core certification in April 2020. If you haven't yet watched my introduction video, I urge you to watch it first. In this video, I'm going to talk briefly about objects, a topic of which there were several questions on the certification exam. I'll be breaking down this video into three main topics. First, databases and schemas, which are contained in an account, and then tables, and then views, both of which are contained in schemas. Object definitions are stored in the metadata cache, and Snowflake doesn't place any hard limits on the number of objects that you can create. It is important to remember that database objects are owned by roles rather than by users. And regarding custom roles, unless specifically granted the custom role, not even the account admin role can modify or drop objects created by a custom role. Ownership of any objects owned by a dropped custom role are transferred to the role that executed the drop role command. Many objects can be cloned, so be sure to view the topic video about cloning. If you want information about the current database, a select current database command will return that information. Data in Snowflake databases can be shared, so be sure to watch the topic video about data sharing. Within databases, there are schemas. Each schema belongs to one Snowflake database within a single account. Within schemas, there are many objects including tables, views, file formats, sequences, stages, stored procedures, and user-defined functions. Objects do not contain roles. Stored procedures allow dedicating the power to perform specified operations to users who otherwise could not do so, and allows branching, looping, and error handling. Stored procedures can access the database and issue nested queries via an API. Another topic you should be familiar with is user-defined functions, as there were a few questions about those on the exam. Note that UDFs can be supported by SQL and JavaScript, and along with session variables, user-defined functions can extend SQL functionality. Note that Snowflake supports secure UDFs. Snowflake tables are logical structures of data that are physically stored in micropartitions. Be sure to watch the topic video on storage, which has a lot of information about micropartitions. Note that there are four Snowflake table types permanent, temporary, transient, and external. External tables are read-only, and temporary tables disappear after the close of the session. You'll want to be sure to know which tables support cloning, time travel, and fail-safe. Notice that external tables is not included in the chart because external tables do not support cloning, time travel, or fail-safe. One other important point you should know is the difference between the create table statement and the create or replace table statement. There are three view types, materialized, non-materialized, or standard, and secure. Materialized and non-materialized views can be secure or not secure. Remember that for data sharing, secure views are required. Views serve a variety of purposes, including enabling more modular code, improving performance, and protecting data by granting access to a subset of a table. External tables can be used in views and remember that all views are read-only. The definition for a view cannot be updated, so to change a view definition, you must recreate the view with a new definition. For the exam, make sure you understand the differences between a materialized view and a non-materialized view. Querying a materialized view is faster than executing the original query because the data is pre-computed, but remember that materializing intermediate results incurs additional costs. Materialized views are most like a table, and in order to use materialized views, you must have a Snowflake Enterprise Edition account. You'll find more topic videos on YouTube, and be sure to reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn, and let me know if you have any questions or if I can help you on your Snowflake certification journey. Thanks so much.